would stop. One of the things that would cause it to do that is that whenever the, shot, the washer has been replaced, if the washer that's been put inside is too large, what happens is the, the temperature of the hot water starts getting so hot and the washer is already large enough, so the washer tends to swell. And when it goes to swell, it starts cutting the circulation to the hot water down slowly or even completely off. So remember, when we go to change washers in the tub and shower valve or any valve in the house for that matter, make sure that you use the proper size washer. You don't want one that's too small or too little. Okay, now this particular case, this is a new tub and shower valve. So, we're going to pull the stems. I'm going to show you how to use the tub, and, um, tub wrenches. And we're going to see what it looks like when we pull the stems out and put them back in. Okay. Now, the perfect tools for this job, we need a set of tub wrenches, which will adapt to any size that we might find behind the wall. This you can pick up anywhere for 14, 15 bucks for the set. Four-way screwdriver, just in case we have screws that, have, that are standard flathead. All right, let's pull it apart, flip it over, and now we've got a Phillips screwdriver. And it's a four-way because it has different um, size Phillips and standard. And also, it's a good idea to the pliers. Okay, let's get started. First of all, what we're going to do, let me give you a close look at how we're going to take the handles off first. Okay, now, taking the handle off, it's a good idea to use the uh, flat side of the screwdriver where the flat handle is. Okay. So that we can catch the back of it and kind of flip it up out of there. Okay. Now, this particular screw here, we're going to need a Phillips. So now that we do have a four-way screwdriver, we can just flip it around to the Phillips side. Okay. Okay. We have no problems taking the handle off. Now, before we go any further, what we're going to do is make sure that the water is cut off. In this particular case, most tubs won't have a separate cutoff from the other fixtures. So more than most likely, we'll have to go to the main and cut the water off at the main to make sure that we don't get water everywhere. So let's cut the water off and make sure that the water is off so we can take this valve apart. Okay, now we have the water to the valve cut off. And in this particular case, I had to cut it off the main. Okay. So now let's start by taking the discussion off first. This particular discussion comes off like this. Sometimes you have to look at them real close. A lot of times, plumbing is a lot of common sense. If you just look at something close, hard enough and long enough, you'll see that uh, it's not really too difficult to take things apart. After all, if someone put it together, it can take it apart. Okay, now we're gonna, another thing we're going to do, as you can't see it now, I'm going to turn the water on with the other handle that's still on, and relieve some of the pressure so that it doesn't come shooting out of the uh, store. Okay, now that the pressure's off of there, Let's grab our set of tub wrenches. Now let's pick the proper size tub wrench. That'll fit right over that, so we can screw that right out of there. You notice that the tub wrenches are deep socket, because in some cases, this nut is way back into the wall where you really can't get to it. Okay, this one's just a little too big. Let's get another one. Ah, okay, there we go. Nice and tight. Okay. Now we're going to take our pliers. 
and grab our tug wrench and twist it around so that the... See? Easy. Well, of course, this is a new valve, too. Okay. Now we got it loose. We can actually pull it out with our hands. Closer look, or a better look, at the stem itself. Okay. This one tends to be in good shape, but of course, it's new also. The washer's not too big, it's not too small. This washer's just right. Now, to make sure that there's no damage to the seat inside, let's look closely into the uh, body valve itself and see how the seat looks in it. Get a close look on it. Okay. Just like on the uh, bath faucet, I mean sink, and basically they're the same. So what you probably want to do is try to get a flashlight, get you a good look up in there, see there? Okay, see that seat? Of course, that seat is in good shape. And when you take yours apart, you'll be able to see it better. Right now you can get such a certain view with the camera. Let's map out, let's see if we can get you a little closer. Okay, now that I've gotten you a little closer, let's look at it real good. Let's see, let's take the flashlight and see if there's any damage that has been done, which we know it's brand new, so there should be no damage to it. The flashlight, just look up in there. Okay, look there. Of course, this is a good one. If it was bad, it probably has scratches around that rim right there. Let me see if I can get you. How about this rim right here? It probably has scratches right around there. If you have scratches, then that will tend to eat the washer up. And you'll be constantly putting new washers in there. So you probably want to either get the seat replaced, or the whole tub and shower valve itself. Okay. Now let's put it back together. This is how we pulled it out. We'll put it back together. Rich. Nice and snug with our hand. Then grab our pliers. Get a little more. Okay. It doesn't need to be really, really tight. Just tight enough so it won't leak. Let's put our discussion back on here. Which I mean by discussion mean our cover plate which is the decorative part of the uh, turbo valve. And like I said, plumbing is basically a lot of common sense. If most people would take the time to actually just sit there and look at their plumbing and find out where the leak's coming from, they'd be surprised to find that a lot of the plumbing jobs around the house, they can actually fix themselves. This is not to put plumbers out of work, but at the same time, you got to admit, some people feel kind of foolish when they call the plumber and the plumber's there only two to three minutes, and they're charging you anywhere from 60 to 70 dollars. Now, if you do tend to find some kind of dirt or calcium build up in there that might be blocking the passageway right through here, what you want to do, one of the good things to do is, and be real careful when you do this, just grab a, a regular coat wire hanger, or if you have anything similar to that around the house, and just try to kind of, just be careful and just lodge it up in there and just kind of clean that out, clean that hole out. You see what I'm doing here? Just kind of clean that hole out. And if there's any trash in there, just try to get that out of there. 
And in some cases, it's kind of a good idea if you got two people to work on this project, because if you do have something that's lodged in there, and you have a problem getting it out with the hanger, have them go to the main and cut the water on just for a split second. At the same time, keep, it, keep your hands over it to make sure if there's anything that's going to shoot out so it don't go all over the place. Same time, stick the wire in there, put your hand over it, and, and just have it.